<clears throat> away with a lot cheaper bill. I had a two-bedroom apartment. Joshua was two, so we couldn't turn things on and off yet. But um, do you need something to put that on, like one of those books? Just, just a little something. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I changed from all fluorescent. I mean, from regular light bulbs to fluorescent in my electric bill, even with the electric stove, it ended up being twenty-five dollars a month. Now we had. We didn't have air conditioning, and we didn't have, um, uh, what is it, heating. The heat was included with, with the rents. It was um, that radiator heat. Um, but anyways, it, it went down from 50 to 25. Yeah. <clears throat> Just with changing the light bulbs. So, um, yeah. Getting a glare? <clears throat> Over here, is that what you're talking about? Jackie? Mm hmm. Now, is that better or do I need to do more? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, now, um, we have a solar lamp, but it had some flaw structures, some structural flaws, because it was a lantern, um, then the, the ceiling didn't get lit, just everything out beside it. Um, and then, so, <clears throat> I like, I like this design because you turn it one way and you power it through the solar and you flip it over and it, it radiates out and this looks like it's a softer light than mine because mine would hurt your eyeballs <laughs> um, just because it was really bright and um, okay all right clean your refrigerator coils Okay, um, also, um, hot, hot water tank, this is a way to make your own solar hot water tank. Um, you take your, um, uh, electric, or, um, electric, yeah. I'm trying to do all this. I'm sorry. Um, anyways, this this is what you use to clean up your refrigerator coils with. No, I thought I saw a fly on something. Sorry. <laughs> and um, <coughs> anyways, it it helps. Um, there is a fly here. Sorry. Um, it'll it'll increase your. Um, Electric or decrease your electric. Where'd you get use. that thing? Lowe's. Lowe's? Home Depot. <clears throat> um, I've never seen it in that one. Yeah, so it gets back. I don't know where the trash is. It gets back, and um, I gotta pull my fridge out in order for, to be able to use it. But um, Sorry. It um, gets in the coils and that. Uh, that was like maybe eight dollars at the most. Seven six per month for that coil. Oh, brush. for the brush. Yeah, I think it was more like six. <coughs> but anyways, um, we need to use it again. That was one of our little projects we didn't get done yesterday. Um, we're trying to get everything done before we go to school. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so, um, so the refrigerator coils, you get that fancy brush and you clean them. Um, hot water tank, okay. Um, this is, 
Okay, underneath it is probably um, that foil, aluminum foil. Okay, something reflective. Okay. And then you get your hose, and they usually use two of them, two huge hoses. And then just coil them up, spray paint them with black first. And, um, and then just put um, like a window thing around it. And there's your solar water heater. And I've seen these um, without even the glass around them off the Jackrabbit Trail in the expressway I-10. <coughs> There's a house that has two of these on the roof. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, electric managing your appliances. And where's my little thing? Okay. I don't know if I can just click or if I need to. Um, there we go. Hmm. When you have joint pain and stiffness, just a bit? Um, accomplishing okay. even little things yeah, okay. can become major victories. I'm Phil Mickelson, Pro Golf. When I was diagnosed oh. with psoriasis, Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Missouri Wind and Solar. And I yeah, wanted to this is Missouri Wind and Solar. I really like this guy. Um, <coughs> he has about four or five different things that show you how to, um, like this one he shows you how to clean an air conditioner and it needs to be wet. He's like, I'm not sure if he's an electrician or a repairman, but he has a background in all this. Through a video on air conditioning, and uh, this is August 2012. The temperature down here in Missouri is like 102 degrees. Because of the heat wave, a lot of people are getting air conditioners for the first time. They've never had them before. But if you get one, what you want to do is make sure. If, if it's, uh, if the air conditioner, what you want to do is measure the room size, the room you're going to cool. So if it's, say, a, a 500 square foot room, you don't want to get an air conditioner that's only capable of doing 400 square feet. It's just not going to do it. It's going to work over time and probably not cool that room down. So just get one that's a little bigger than what you need. And something else, too. I never get 110 volt air conditioners. I get 220 volt jobs. And the reason I get 220 volt jobs is because they'll use about half the amps that 110 volt will. 110 volt air conditioners are expensive to run. So if you can, just get you a 220 volt air conditioner. That's kind of what the plug looks like for them. Anyway, first thing you want to do is make sure that the filter in the front is cleaned out. This thing is dirty. That air conditioner is not going to work very darn. This one's up here at my new workshop. It's all covered with sawdust, but anyway. Try to keep this thing cleaned out. Try to keep these coils cleaned out, too. Otherwise, your air conditioner is just going to run over time. Not do a good job. Well, this is a brand new one, and uh, it comes in an ener energy saving mode. But if you notice, the air conditioner is not really putting out uh, that much cold air. There's a reason for it. I'll show you outside. All right. When you install a window air conditioner, make sure it's got like just a quarter of an inch tilt, say from inside to out. If you don't, water will run inside your house. But see these coils here? These little tiny fins are used to cool the compressor. If these fins get smashed over, and I've seen a lot of them that have been smashed over, 
That's going to make it very hard to cool that compressor off. And it's going to stop the airflow. And these little coils, these little tubes here, basically are the radiator to the motor. And these pins are pushed down, smashed over. It's going to stop cooling. You can go to an appliance parts store. And I'll show you. This little tiny comb. This is a mustache comb. <laughs> they make a comb. Kind of like this, but it's a round disc. And what that little comb is for is getting into these coils and straightening them back out. You can get it at an appliance parts store. And you, then what you do is basically put that comb into those pins and straighten them back out. And that'll repair those pins. But this air conditioner has a big round fan on the inside of it with what's called a slinger on it. And that slinger is meant to pick up water off of this tray and throw it through these coils to keep the motor cooled down so, it can, so that you get the best uh, cooling out of your air conditioner. If this pan runs dry, it's going to start overheating and your temperature is going to go up. I'd like to show you what I mean. Just bring that up here and down inside. Now to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, this little tray down here in the bottom of the air conditioner this thing is supposed to be full of water if this runs out of water this is going to start overheating and your temperature is going to rise okay something else you want to do if you can and it's all possible this air conditioner is mounted at the north side of my uh, garage it doesn't ever really see the sun except for sundown and the night sun hits this thing and starts heating it up. So if you can, don't ever install an air conditioner on the south side of your house where it gets sun all day. So that's the only place you can do it. That's the only place you can do it. My other air conditioner in the garage is on the east side. It's just the morning sun and then that's it. So don't put them in the west side of your house or your garage or wherever or the east south side. They're going to get sun on them all day long. It's going to make it work Okay. Anyways, he's really informative. All right. And um, I, I've got other videos for y'all today. But um, Missouri Wind and Solar, if you can write that down. He's He's got about five videos on that. And then, of course, he's got Wind and Solar videos. <laughs> but that... Um, the refrigerator coil trick I got from him. All right, and then, um, let me mix it on this. And where's my... Yeah, Missouri Wind and Solar, that's how it's spelled. Um, he has a YouTube channel. So, where's my, there we go. Uh, which one's this? Okay, this is how to make your own um, solar panel. <coughs> Can you hear me? Hello there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas, and today I'm going to be talking to you about making your own solar panels. In a previous video, Denise and I showed you how to tab this type of cell together. These are multi-crystalline cells. They are 1.8 watts apiece. The tricky part comes in the next step. You need to encapsulate these in something to protect them from the elements. The problem that you run into is the cost. Doing it yourself costs about the same as buying a fully pre-manufactured panel that is factory made. This panel So it go. shows you how to do it cheaper. This panel go. This panel is embedded in a resin that is UV resistant and I let, made it clear on the back with a clear piece of material just so you can see through it. This is totally water resistant and the resin on this 
You use about an ounce of resin per cell. The resin is about 50 cents an ounce. So, panel to the right is one that I made. This took me about two hours to do while videotaping. I went through the process. I could probably knock one of these out in about an hour plus the overnight time for the resin to cure. When you go to buy these, there are several different ways you can purchase these. The ones that I purchased are pre-tabbed. They have tabbing wire already attached to the front. This will save you a ton of time. Putting the tabbing wire on the front is one of the more tricky parts. They cost just a little bit more than completely untabbed cells. There are also short tab cells. I personally don't like those because it is the same thing as this, but the tabs are clipped. They're clipped so short that you can't make the junction to the back. So what you have to do is take your iron and heat the wire up, remove it, and put new wire down. They give you wire to do that. The problem that you run into on some of them, you can actually mess the area up where this is supposed to connect, and it's really difficult to get them to reconnect. There are ways of just tapping the wires together, kind of extending that. It's better, in my opinion, to buy untabbed cells or cells that have the complete tabbing wire. The cells that I bought were actually pretty inexpensive because they are broken in the middle. You shouldn't be afraid of cells like this because if the tabbing wire is put good down the front, you're not gonna have any problems with it. I came up with a way of encapsulating these cells that uses about an ounce of resin per cell. It costs about 50 cents an ounce for this resin, so by the time you encapsulate 36 cells, you're at about $18. If you put a slightly thicker coating on, you're at about $25. In regards to the frame, you can use regular 2x4 and make frames that way. It will not warp. Some people say it will warp and break your glass. If you buy perfectly straight 2x4s, they will not warp. I do not recommend you use pressure treated wood, even though it's designed for outdoors. That does warp over time. A lot of people will take, make their own frames, put the glass in, and just put the cells in there. The next morning they wake up and there is humidity inside the glass. The way that I'm going to be showing you in this video to encapsulate these totally solves that problem. I'm also going to be showing you a very easy way to put these together. This is a string of nine cells. You would need four of these to make the panel. This, the first one that I did took me 30 minutes to do. Once I got the hang of it, the next one took me 10 minutes. So you could easily knock out a panel in about an hour, which is a big time savings from the other ways of doing it. I have a box of solar panel cells that I got for a really good price. They cost about 60 cents a piece, a lot. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what his YouTube channel is. Uh, green power science. Okay. And less than one dollar a watt is this video. And you have a son that could probably do this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> Did you have that? <coughs> Pardon? Did you do it? Did you do it? Have I done this yet? No, Gordy keeps talking about it. <laughs> and then he never pulls the trigger and buys it so that we can have the boys do it. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, anyways, we have... We haven't done it yet, and you can also rent solar panels. Um, another thing I found out recently is if you have an appliance that has those um, little star points, energy efficient, star, whatever, um, you can write that down and give it to the electric company and you'll get a deduction every year. Like that one? Like this one, yes. Yeah, I just I just found out about this about a month ago in class. Because somebody else did one on You get um, a tax deduction? Yeah. yeah. Or I, I don't know if it's tax or if it's directly from your I think it's from the electric company. Um <clears throat> So yeah, 
But anyways, we just got a new TV set so we can do that. And there's hopefully our refrigerator, I'm not sure. And we've got the washer and dryer in there and they're supposed to be energy efficient as well. So yeah. <clears throat> um, hey babe. Okay. Um, hey, how are you doing? How are you? What's sleepy, Ed? Well, you know how it is. Actually, I've been awake for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this doesn't want to go. Okay. Uh oh. Open the light. Uh, it's the same one. No, it's like, yeah, open the exact same one. <coughs> Never mind. My son was watching it. Okay, so. Okay, um. Ways to. Save water. Um, you know, it's electric. I mean, the water bill went up. Did your water bill go up? In Buckeye? Mm -hmm. um, I would assume it does. We don't have Buckeye water. Oh, yeah. We the have water bill went up. How much the the rates up? went up. I used less water last well, month, but my bill was higher. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The rates went up. Sure that's Just normal is about $100 <coughs> a month, isn't yeah. it? With your, well, we have the irrigation and garbage and water with the little house we have in Buckeye. Mm -hmm. I guess the irrigation is going up, mm -hmm. but I don't want my trees to die. You have um, irrigation through the, through the water, too? Through the city, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, it's just in the ground, you know, a little sprinkle. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, we have the flood irrigation. Yeah. Our house is yeah, by the park. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Historical Buckeye. His, yeah, this is called <laughs> Historical Buckeye. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Um, or you can say hysterical. <laughs> no, okay. Um, so this is a low flow water head for your shower. And it's supposed to help both with electricity and the water. Um, also, we do what we call sailor showers. And you turn the water on, get wet, turn the water off. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And lather up, and then turn the water back on again. Mm -hmm. And it saves a lot of water that way. Um, this, this is um, a little gadget where you flip it up. Okay, like when you're washing the dishes, in the sink and you got the temperature just right and you're just scrubbing them and, and rinsing them off and putting them on and this this will flip it up and hold on to that water so that it, it'll actually just turn the water off from the faucet itself and so then you can scrub and then flip it down to rinse it off again and actually this is a running water is a biblical principle washing in running water because that way you can't spread germs to like um, the bathtub will hold okay like you'll wash your head off and then every all the dirt that was from your hair and head is in the bottom of the bathtub now and that's what you use to wash the rest of you with if you're taking a bath and um, when I was, I was at a home for ladies in Texas and this avoided, you know, female infections. Just, just the fact of washing in a shower mm -hmm. instead of a bathtub. Um, so, yeah. And then, um, but it talks about it in, um, in the law, the books of law somewhere about washing under running water. Okay. 
All right, um, rainwater collection. This is kind of sort of the same subject, but different. So, <clears throat> pardon? Uh, how long is the class going to be? About an hour. Okay. From 11? <clears throat> From 11 to 12. 12? Yeah. Um, Does that make lunch? No. Okay. Right. Rain. Okay, when you catch the rain off your roof, right? And this is for um, a thousand square f square roof home, and you get one inch of rain, which we get that much rain here. Um, approximately fifty percent of it goes down the bout that rain spout, and you catch seventy five pounds. Okay. But this is the whole equation and everything. Um, I'm pretty sure one inch is more accurate <clears throat> than the quarter inch that these people previously had because I saw it different in different parts of the web. So I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but... <laughs> then what do you use the water for? Um, use it for watering your yard with. And you can keep it longer. Um, there's ways of um, filtering it and putting it into barrels and so forth. And there's not a whole lot of um, like if you use your reuse your gray water, then there's mm -hmm. contaminants in that. But this is just pure rain water, yeah. so it's different. Okay. Yeah, there's rain. a lot of stuff in the air, though. That yeah. As the rain is coming down, it's getting all these chemicals and stuff that's in there. Right. Anyways, uh, rainwater collection, but we're trying to solve the problem of high water bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... My grandmother used to have that in her yard in the, out in the country. She yeah. had these big barrels and when it rained, you know, it would collect rain. Okay. Now this... This person showing you their rainwater barrels. You don't have that on our houses, do you? No, but they can be installed. I've got it. <laughs> they have a pretty elaborate setup there, don't they? Mm -hmm. But it's really cheap. These barrels cost ten dollars on Craigslist. This pipe is like a dollar twenty-five for ten feet, yeah. and the little fixtures are about a quarter, thirty-five cents each. Um, now, depending on how large your house is, I mean, you can just do <coughs> one side of the house mm -hmm. and get water. And then he's got his little hose there, but yeah. No, right. I was trying to do that. But anyways, you can see what he's doing, what he did. Now, this, okay, now that you know what you're going to use it for, <coughs> I uh, got a little video of how to use your, how to glue PVC. <laughs> Solvent cemented joints for PVC pipe and fittings are easy to make if you follow the right steps. This video demonstrates how to make strong joints using a two-step process. Figure out how to do anything on YouTube. You can. And Google. <laughs> to start off, you'll need to gather the following materials. The pipe and fittings you'll be joining. A pipe cutter or saw, depending on the size of the material you will Okay. You'll also need sandpaper, like a fine grade of sandpaper. 
and they don't show it here, but my construction maintenance teacher, um, you take the sandpaper and wipe it both on the inside and outside, and that helps um, helps with the glue. Kind of like, have you ever had your nails done mm -hmm. and they rough them up mm -hmm. so that it solidifies? Sticks better. Yeah, adheres sticks better. better. Yeah, adheres. Working with clean rags for cleaning surfaces and removing excess solvent. But they don't show Christie's it on Christie's primer, videos. available in purple and <clears throat> clear. Purple primer is often used to visually indicate that primer has been applied. And Christie's solvent cement. In most cases, the can you'll be using will include a dauber for applying the solvent. Make sure this applicator is at least half the diameter of the pipe. Using too small of an applicator can result in not enough solvent being applied. A wide selection of daubers, brushes, and rollers are available for different pipe diameters. You'll want to have all your materials within easy reach so you can complete all the solvent cementing steps rapidly. A good joint begins with the pipe cut clean and square. If a pipe is cut crooked, it will not bottom into the fitting properly. Now this is a really expensive tool he's using there. They've got them about this big around and all you do is twist it. And um, probably this probably costs ten or twenty dollars. This thing I'm talking about is about three or five to five dollars. So it's up to you. Um, PVC is a little bit harder to cut than than copper pipe, but copper pipe's more expensive. The bottom 20% of the joint is the strongest part, so it's essential that the pipe is cut square and fits. But if you have a hacksaw, that'll work too. But the square part, you might want to get the <laughs> yeah for it to be square. All the way to the bottom of the fitting. Remove all internal and external burrs, shavings, and raised beads from the outside of the pipe that may have come from yeah, the Yeah, you can use your sandpaper for that. You may need to use a file or beveling tool. Clean the joining surfaces of the pipe and fitting, making sure both are free of any foreign materials. To remove heavy buildup of dirt, grime, foil, or grease, you can use Christie's Cleaner. Test the fit of the clean pipe and fitting. Make sure it's snug. The pipe should go one-third to two-thirds into the fitting. The fitting should not be loose on the pipe or be able to fall off under its own weight. <coughs> A primer helps soften the surfaces of the pipe before the solvent is applied. Apply the primer to the fitting socket, keeping the surface wet until softened. Do not allow primer to puddle or run past the fitting stop. Next, quickly apply primer to the pipe. Then make a second application of primer to the fitting socket. While the surfaces are still wet from priming, apply a generous even coat of cement onto the pipe, matching the depth of the fitting socket. Do not brush the solvent too thin, or it will dry before the joint is made. Next, generously apply the cement inside the fitting covering the full depth of the socket without allowing the cement to puddle or run beyond the fitting stop. Apply another full layer of cement to the pipe. Remember, most joint failures are caused by insufficient cement. Quickly, while the cement is still wet, assemble the pipe and fitting. While inserting the pipe into the fitting, twist the pipe one quarter turn. Stop rotating when the pipe reaches the fitting stop. Hold the pipe and fitting together for at least 30 seconds. Inspect the joint to make sure there is a bead of solvent around the entire diameter. If there are gaps or voids, sufficient solvent may not have been applied and the joint may be defective. Remove excess cement from the pipe and fitting. Newly assembled joints must be handled carefully until the recommended set time has been reached. Wait until the joint cures fully before pressurizing the system. See the cure time information on the can label or in the solvent welding guide. <coughs> solvent cement joints are easy to make and permanent if you follow the basic rules. Cut the pipe squarely and remove curves. Clean the pipe. Test the fit. Apply primer. 
apply sufficient solvent cement. Join while the surfaces are wet and covered with solvent. Hold 30 seconds and allow sufficient cure time. Inspect the joint. Failed joints are typically caused by insufficient application of solvent or poorly prepared joining surfaces. Take care to do the process right and you'll create permanent joints every time. For more information, ask for a free copy of Christie's Guide to Solvent Welding PVC Pipe and Fittings. Find it at tchristie.com. Okay, um, something they didn't mention is you do a pressure test, which means you put the water on full blast and then see where it's going to leak or drip at. And um, <clears throat> you can take a p t piece of tissue paper and go around the pipes, and if, if it's wet, then you redo it. So, anyways, that's a couple of tips I got from my instructor. <laughs> Um, he was a plumber's assistant and also an electrician, so yeah. Okay. How are we doing on time, Jackie? Mm -hmm. Five minutes to twelve. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's already been on for 36 minutes. Alright. <clears throat> So does anybody have to be anywhere? Not really. Okay. Um. Where's that? I don't know. I'm trying to get this thing to come on, but it's not working. Okay. Oh, cool. Gray water? Gray water, yes. Uh, well, wait a minute. We just did rainwater. Okay, this is gray water. Which is a little bit different than rainwater. Melbourne household uses about 260,000 litres of water per year. Now that averages out a little over 700 litres of water per day. Now that is a lot of wastewater. But by using grey water, it's a really smart way to make your garden look really good without having to rely on tap or tank water. But if you are using grey water, there's just a few things that you should or shouldn't do. Because if you don't get it right, it's possible to damage plants, soil, and even put your pets and children at risk. Now that's because grey water can contain chemicals and bacteria which in the wrong place can cause problems. Okay so what exactly is grey water? Grey water is the wastewater from the bath, shower, hand basin and washing machine. It doesn't include water from your toilet. Don't use kitchen wastewater including from the dishwasher because it has a high concentration of food wastes and chemicals which can damage soils and plants. A grey water system can be as simple as a bucket from the shower or a more complex plumber fitted system. Before installing a permanent grey water treatment or reuse system, be aware that each council has its own set of rules and regulations and that the system also needs to be EPA approved. Alright, so now for a few safety tips. You need to be aware that grey water can contain pathogens and disease causing organisms, but if you stick to a few simple rules, then using it on the garden is quite safe. Now the first of those rules is to make sure you don't store that water for more than 24 hours. So try and use it straight away, because apart from the smell, bacteria can actually multiply in grey water quite rapidly. Now the second tip is that if anyone in the household's got the flu or measles or a stomach bug, then make sure you stop using grey water for that period of time because it can actually increase the chance of the germs spreading to others. 
So keep your grey water safely away from pets, children and people and use it where the plant needs it most, directly at the root zone. Now that means that the best irrigation systems are those that apply water, again, directly to the root zone. So that's things like your drip irrigation systems, which can easily be covered by mulch. And don't hose or spray grey water around the garden because you're just spreading those chemicals and bacteria and you can also burn your plants. So make sure you rotate which areas of the garden you're watering and don't overdo it because you don't want patches of grey water lying around. Also make sure the grey water doesn't run off into stormwater drains or into neighbouring properties and make sure you wash your hands after using it. And just be aware that your neighbours have the right to lodge a complaint with your local council if your grey water does spill onto their property. So to be safe, allow a buffer zone between your irrigation system and the edge of your property. Avoid using it on the herb or vegetable garden, especially if the crop is to be eaten raw. Cooking helps protect against any harmful bacteria that may end up on the surface of the plants. Now, grey water is waste water, but you can dramatically increase the quality of that water by doing a little bit of careful planning. For example, thinking about the type of detergent that you're using in your washing machine. Now look for one that's garden safe. In other words, it's low in phosphorus and it's low in salt. That way the water will be safe to use on your shrub beds and borders. Switch off your grey water system if you're bleaching or washing dirty nappies. And distribute the water Nappies over a large an area as possible to dilute salts and nutrients across the whole garden. Okay, let's take a look at this simple checklist to make sure you're doing everything right when it comes to grey water. Are you using grey water straight away? Are you using garden safe detergents? Is grey water pooling or running off the property? Are your plants still looking healthy? And is your soil changing in any way? Okay. So there's an overview of grey water. And, um... Melbourne household uses about 260,000 litres of water per year. Now that I guess I forgot I did that. <laughs> Okay, now this is right here in Mesa. Okay, we're going to show you our latest project we just completed. And it's a shower pump. And basically what we do is we take the water from our shower and then we pump it out to our garden. And this is our switch that we turn on. <coughs> you can hear the pump right now. And there's a 15 amp uh, quick blow inline fuse in there. And we really had to do just minimal modifications to make this project work. We had to put one hole through the wall. And we had to do uh, one slight modification to the shower itself. And uh, we replaced the normal shower drain with one that you could actually close. Uh, that way it fills the shower pan up and it enables the bilge pump to work. And this is the bilge pump we have. It's a 12 volt. 1,000 gallon per hour solar powered bilge pump uh, with a big huge uh, flexi tubing that's, that's connected to the PVC. 50 dollars or 
And, and then all the water is transferred to our new uh, <coughs> garden bed. So let's go ahead and make this work now. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on the water for our shower. I like this because it's easy. Can you see that? We're going to turn on our pump. Well, it's pretty dark. Walking outside. I noticed that too. Um, there you go. Okay, so the shower water comes down the PVC from our shower. It comes up this sleep little slope here. I thought I heard a chicken. Hmm? And what we added here is to prevent the backflow <laughs> from going back into our shower because the shower is actually lower uh, than our garden bed here. And we already have some purslane growing. Mm -hmm. and some uh, grasses <coughs> and the grasses will actually help with the purification process not that there will be much needed because we're using gray water with green soaps so but here it is basically we have uh, two by tens two by ten by ten uh, filled with okay now this is their filtration system mm -hmm. and um, they put it through this before they put it out into the yard and these particular plants pull out the bad stuff. Pond liner and then on the bottom we have some aggregate going all the way down and a bunch of aggregate here and then we have it plumbed and right now what we're doing is we've been watering our fruit trees with our shower water as we need and every day we just move it to a different tree and we're actually starting to grow some pretty good grass here uh, which the chickens are loving Gardenpool.org is their website. If you want to write it down, gardenpool.org. Okay, we're going to show you our latest project we just completed. And it's a shower. And they also have a meetup, um, meetup.com. But, and then you want to search for Gardenpool. And it's in Mesa. They have all kinds of fun things there at their home. And they charge $5 for, usually $5 for a class, um, depending on what they're going over. We went for, <coughs> um, we wanted to see their aquaponics set up, and then they had a class that was on cloning. Um, okay, so. um, cloning plants. They would <coughs> clone um, their oh, what do you call them? tomato plants. So they they clone a. Mature plant, potato, yeah, potato, tomato plant. Excuse my tongue. And um, then, it, using aquaponics, you can get ripe tomatoes in 30 days. Doing that, yeah. Using both aquaponics and the cloning. Oh come on! All right, I guess I'll just. Enter the address this way. Okay. Uh, okay, this is two years later. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. Did we do the laundry room or not? We, we didn't do the laundry. Rainwater 
this time. Okay. Um, Laundry gray water system. And what we do is we simply wash our clothes with.